In this demonstration, we're going to take a look at a situation where you might want to choose to use an object constructor as opposed to an object literal. So let's say I wanted to create just a simple car object. Var a car, we'll just set it to a basically an empty object literal. And then I want to hang off of it a simple property. We're just going to call that property color. And I'll assign the, uh, the uh, property the color green. And now I can actually output that that actual property to the console with a console.log. So console.log a car dot color. So now if I save that and I load up my web browser, I can actually refresh this and we're going to see that it says that the color of the car is green, which is exactly what we what we would expect. This is actually an example of a simple property. In ECMAScript 5, we actually have the ability to set up properties that have getters and setters and actually have a private field behind those getters and setters. So to set up something like that, we can't use an object literal. Instead, we actually have to use an actual constructor function. So to do that, let's go ahead and create a new car object with an actual constructor function. So we'll say function car. And then I'm going to create a private property called the color. So we'll just call it the color. Now there's a special function in ECMAScript 5 called define property, and it hangs off the object object. And I can say object.define property. And so the first parameter that I pass in is actually the object to which I'm adding the property. In this case, it's going to be the value of this, since I'm going to be um, newing up this new car object. So I'm going to do this. And then I'm going to pass in the name of the property that I want to add. So in this case, it's called color. And then the third parameter are some attributes about this particular property. So we're actually going to take a look at some of the accessor attributes that I can actually set up for this. And so the first one is called get. And all this is is simply a function that will return the value of the property. Now we're going to be storing the value inside of this private variable, the color. So all I have to do here is actually type return the color. Okay. Now just so we can kind of see what's going on, I'm going to do a console.log that's going to say basically called get color. And then we'll actually have it output the value that we're going to return. There we go. So there's our get function. So that will actually enable us to retrieve the private value. But let's say we also want to set the value. So we can actually create a set function. Now this function actually takes a parameter. Um, we're going to call the parameter value, but you can name it anything you would like. And so basically when we set the value, it's going to pass in that value that we're setting into this function. And we can actually say the color equal to value, just like that. And then we'll come down here and do another console.log and say called set color. And then we'll actually output the value that we have set it to. Okay. So this demonstrates a very simple way to do a, a get and a set. So if we actually wanted to try this out, we could actually come down here and we'll create a new object called a better car. And we'll say new car. And then we can do a better car um, dot color equal to um, red. And then we can actually do a console.log a better car dot color, just like that. And now we'll come back to our web browser and we'll actually reload this. We can see here where we first called set color, and that's the color that was passed in. And then when we actually retrieved the color to output it to the screen, it called the get function and the color that was returned was red and then here is the actual value that we're outputting with our console.log. Now one of the big advantages to taking this approach when defining your properties is that specifically on the set function we can actually come in here and we can validate the data uh, 
before it's actually saved to that property. So if I wanted to, I could do something like this. Var s color, and I'll do string value. And this is basically going to make sure that whatever, whatever data type is passed in, we're going to um, treat it as a string. Then I can do s color dot length. Let's say they just passed in a zero length string. Then that means it's not really a valid color. So instead, I actually want to throw an error. So I can do throw new error. And then I'll say uh, color cannot or color uh, name cannot be a zero length string. And that will actually throw an exception out. Otherwise, if all is good, then I want to go ahead and save that s color value to my private property. And so now basically whenever somebody sets this particular property, on my object, I can do some basic validation to make sure that it's actually a legitimate value. So now if I come down here, I'm going to save this. We'll reload our browser. We'll see that everything works exactly as it did before. But this time, if I change this red to a zero length string, and then I come back and reload this, You'll see that it says color name cannot be a zero length string. So using this technique, we can actually perform some basic data validation um, of the values that we're assigning to our properties before it gets assigned. Up here with this approach, we could have assigned any value to that property on the object literal. But by using these getters and setters, it gives us additional capabilities to validate data before it's actually saved to a property. And by using this constructor function, we can actually set up a private variable that can then be referenced and used by the getter and setter.